The scripture says, I will stand upon my watch, and I will set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Again, this is, this is Habakkuk uh, uh, speaking to God on behalf of the people. And the Lord answered me, Habakkuk, saying the Lord gives Habakkuk an, an, an answer on behalf of us, on behalf of the people. And he says, write division and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, he says, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, it will not delay. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live, what? <laughs> By faith. May the Lord have a blessing uh, to the reading of the, of the scriptures of God. We begin this 2023 year encouraging the church, encouraging the people of God, encouraging the virtual community, reminding and encouraging everyone about living by faith. So this morning I want to speak to you our final message, our final Sunday morning message. I want to conclude a message I've entitled, You've Been Called Out. You've been called out. Have you ever been called out? Have you ever been in a large group and your name was called for the good or, 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 or for the bad, but, but you've been called out? To be called out means to be cho chosen or selected for a specific purpose or task. You see, God told Habakkuk that the believers, the, the people of God, must learn that they're unique from other people on the earth. They're unique because they've been called and you've been called to live by faith. You've been called out from among the crowd because he's called us to walk and to to live by faith. To be called out, it implies being singled out from a large group or, or, or given a specific mission or an assignment that others did not get. But in the context of faith and spirituality, being called out often refers to God's invitation to individuals or communities to live in accordance with his will and his purpose. You've been called out. You see, when we're called out by God, it means that he has chosen us for a unique purpose and has set us apart from the rest of the world. It's a privilege. Today to know as a child of God that our Lord has used the prophet Habakkuk to bring home a message that simply says you as people of God must live by faith. It's not optional for a child of God 
The Christian walk is a faith walk. Only the just shall live by faith. So, so you see, this is a calling. This is a, a calling on your life. This is a, a calling. And if you haven't captured it all year long, it's still not too late to capture it today. Amen. So this calling may involve various aspects such as serving others, sharing the gospel, living a life of righteousness and holiness, using your gift and talents for his glory, or participating in a specific ministry. Because you've been called out. You've been called out. You see, being called out carries with it a sense of divine assignment and responsibility. You see, it requires obedience and a desire to surrender to God leading us as we align our lives. As we align our lives with his plan, with his purpose. But ultimately, people of God, ultimately being called out is is a pure invitation into an intimate relationship with God. Imagine waking up every day and saying, Lord, what is my assignment today? In the daily bread that you have given to me, What's my assignment today is, again, it's an act of really being called out. So as we close out this year, we close out this 2023, we are, we have to be filled with gratitude for all the marvelous things God has done for us individually and for our church family, and members. Our our theme for this year is what? The time is now. The time is now. And in essence, we begin this year by saying no more procrastination. Okay? No more putting it off. No No more saying, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I'll deal with it next month. I'll deal with it next year, but but the scripture tells us now faith, now faith, now faith. It was, it's a call to action. It's a call to immediate action and, and for us to embrace living in the present moment. So today I want to explore for one final time as uh, as a prophet Habakkuk in his, in, in, in his writing, in his, in, in his message uh, to, uh, to God's people, I want to encourage you today that you've been called to live by faith. You've been called out. You've been called out from among the majority. You've been called out among uh, your peers. You've been called out among your groups. You've been called out among the crowd. You've been called to live by faith. You've been called out. So, when we look at Hebrews 11, 1, one final time, when we look at Hebrews 11, 1, we, we see that, that, that is, it is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is not wishfully thinking or merely being optimistic. It is a confident assurance in God's promise. You know, when you are believing God for something, it is okay to, to stand up and stick your chest out and say, I'm believing God. I'm trusting God all the way. Because what I've learned, people of God, the more you speak about it, the more it becomes part of you. You know, it's just like telling a lie. <laughs> the more you tell the lie. Although it's not true, but you get to the point where you start believing your own lie. And there's a challenge when you finally decide to come clean. You come clean, you're trying to tell yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's, it, it was not true, it's not true, it's not true. Because you made a believer. 
out of your own self and a lie. But imagine what faith does. When you begin to speak it, you begin to walk it, you begin to live it. And this is what the, the Lord wanted Habakkuk to know about the people. The people needed to, to come out and live by faith. The people needed to come out and live by faith. You see, it allows us to hold on to hope when circumstances seem uncertain. Uh, many of us uh, went through the, the whole COVID era, and, and there was a, a great time of, of much uncertainty, but we had to hold on to our faith. We had to hold on trusting and believing that the Lord will see us through. And so faith is the, the evidence of things not seen. It's, it, it's there, but you can't see it. But we've been instructed, we've been encouraged to believe it anyway. We've been instructed and encouraged to believe it anyway. So when God often gives each of us visions, and we share the vision that we have seen, it's yet to be manifest, but, but we have seen it. It's yet to be manifest. So when we share it with others, they have to grab a hold and believe it, although they can't see it. Faith enables us to believe in the unseen realities of God's kingdom. It gives us spiritual eyes to perceive beyond what our physical sense can comprehend. You see, there is a spiritual world out there, people of God. There is a spiritual realm, and, and there are things happening in the spiritual realm right before our eye, but we can't see it. But we have to believe by faith that it exists, and this is why we are reminded the just shall live by faith. The people of God, like you and me, we have to live this thing by faith. What separates us from everyone else is that we are men and women of faith. What separates you on the job, what folks don't know when you walk in, faith walk in. <laughs> when you're in the meeting, there is a person in that meeting, a person of faith. So when others are talking about dooms issues and, and things just getting worse and things will not get any better, they have a person at the table, a person of faith. So the, the Lord uses uh, Habakkuk's plea on behalf of the people to remind the people that they've been called. You and I have been called. To live by faith. You see, it gives us the spiritual eyes to perceive beyond what our physical sense can comprehend. These eyes of ours, how blessed we are to have them. But sometimes, people of God, our eyes do a number on us. That we are so caught up into what we see naturally, opposed to what God says he'll do. You see, the, the Spirit of God is like this. He operates, he's like, if you go to a theater and there's a performance going on, that he is the one that is pulling the string. When you go to a theater... I'm sure most of us will never, ever meet the person behind the scene pulling the string uh, from one act to another. The curtain closes. The curtain opens. They never have the, the individual doing all that to come out and say, oh, we want to recognize the one that's been working the screen, the curtains, all throughout the show. He's not recognized. But he is really the one behind the scene to introduce 
all of the different things. And so the, the Holy Spirit of God operates often in the invisible, and he's pulling all of the strings, although you can't see him. By faith, he is there. So the book of Habakkuk concludes that the just shall live by faith. Abraham, viewed as the father of many nations, was a man of great faith. It was a man of great faith. He demonstrated unwavering trust by offering Isaac as a, as a sacrifice unto God. Man of great faith. Uh, Moses, a uh, man of great faith, he was trusting in a divine guidance, the divine guidance of the Lord. That Moses had to stay in step with God. When the children of Israel got hungry, Moses had to stay in step and, and keep a listening ear to God. When the, when the children of Israel got, got tired of the manna and, and wanted something else on the, on the menu, he had to stay in step with God so he could speak to God on behalf of the people. David had to be encouraged and, and trust in God's divine deliverance as he faced one of the greatest challenges of his life. As the, the giant came before him, he had to trust God. He had to trust God. And when he came before Goliath, he didn't say, Goliath, I come to you in the name of David, the, the son of Jesse. He said, I come against you in the name of our Lord. You see, he, he put his faith in the Lord. He put his, when it was time to go to, go to, go to war, he, he put his faith in, 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 in that God would use the stone. That he, would, that he would shoot at Goliath. He put his faith in it, believing. True story, true story, people of God. Not something I read or heard, but something I experienced. When I was training to become a Marine, uh, one of the requirements was that you had to be good utilizing the weaponry the rifle, and the pistol that, they're, that they assigned to you. And I had a, uh, an instructor that uh, just for whatever reason uh, was not feeling me, and he, 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 did, he did something to me. And as a result, I was, I had, it had boiled down to just a few uh, I had just a few rounds left, just a few rounds left. And if those rounds did not hit the bullseye, I would not have been able to qualify to be a United States Marine. So this is what happened, people of God. I had two rounds left. And the only way I could be cleared to being fully qualified was that both of those rounds had to go in the bullseye. <laughs> there was five points for every bullseye, and I needed ten. And all I could do was aim, <laughs> pray, and shoot. And the first one went in, went in and they waved the... It was like a lollipop stick that they wave in the air. And it's white. That's a bullseye. <laughs> I was down to one more round. And everything was on the line. If this did not go into the bullseye, I would not have qualified. And I aimed, I prayed, and I released it. And when the gentleman on the other side waved that white candy stick up in the air, I said, bullseye. I just went crazy <laughs> on that range and violated all of the rules and everything. But I, I was just that happy. Okay, I was just that happy. But, but, it, but, it, but it's like this, people of God. 
that when we use our faith, when we use our faith and, 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 and God comes through for us, it's a beautiful thing. It's a thing worth celebrating. And so throughout the, the, the book of Hebrews, we have those that have gone the distance by faith, those that have gone all the way by faith. I love it how the, the three Hebrew boys, they say, hey, we're believing God. <laughs> we're believing God all the way. And they make note, they say, even if, even if we are not delivered, <laughs> we're still believing God. We're not changing. We're not changing. And so, people of God, we have been called to live like that. We have been called to be firm. Be firm because the just shall live by faith. It's the scripture of foundation for living. It is the basis. It's, it's a basis. It's what you and I stand on. It's what you and I believe. It's by faith. And so in Habakkuk 2 verse 4, he says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright within him, but the just shall live by faith. And so we have to embrace, we have to go through a, a process of embracing our faith now. Bra embracing our faith now. Embracing faith in the now. Living by faith means embracing God's calling for our lives at this present moment. The reason why this present moment is very important because the prophetic word helps us to understand that we all been called out by faith. You've been, you've been called out to come out uh, from among them and live by faith. It involves stepping out of our comfort zones and trusting God's guidance and provisions. Did you know that without faith, that without faith, you can't please God? Hey, you can be trying to do all of these things but you don't have no faith, then you haven't made God happy at all. How many of you love to make God happy this morning all over this place? Amen. You want to make God happy? Start living by faith. Okay? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, it, it, it's important to seize every opportunity. To live by faith. When you hear things doomed, when you hear that things are bad, those are, those are opportunities right there to step out and believe God by faith. When you hear bad news and, 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 and things that discourage you, those are, those are faith opportunities. Those are faith opportunities. And, and where we fail is that we don't seize those opportunities. We don't seize those opportunities to step out and believe God by faith. You know, something that is very strong on the, uh, trending very high on, on YouTube and many uh, social media circles uh, this past few weeks is the, this whole issue of uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Some of you have seen it. Yeah, what a, what, a sad, what, a, what a sad situation. But what we as God's people, we have to step out and pray and believe that God's going to work this whole thing out, that God's going to turn it around for God's good. And to, uh, to, to be a blessing, to be a blessing to ultimately draw people onto the Lord. How he's going to do it, that's not up to us. But to believe, believe anytime you see negative situation, it's an opportunity to seize and step out on faith. Living by faith in the now 
allows us to seize the opportunity that God presents before us. Again, we've been called out. We've been called to live by faith. It empowers us to take action knowing that God is with us every step of the way. If he loves it, if he loves it when we step out on faith, why don't we do it? If it makes him happy that you're like, Lord, this thing is bad. But, Lord God, I'm just believing you that you will turn this whole situation around and get the honor and glory for it. Again, seizing opportunities, people of God. You got faith. You've been called out. You've been set aside. You've been called out and separated from the rest of the world. But you're a person of faith when you step out and believe God. Believe God that he's going to change the situation. Because it empowers us to take action, knowing that God is with us all the way. Stepping out of our procrastination. You see, faith... It does a great number on us. It propels us away from our procrastination into a life of purposefully action. That's what faith, that's what faith does. You see, the what was separated, what separates believers from non-believers is that we are people of faith. Of faith, when when they're comparing you to someone else, more than likely the other person may not be a person of faith. And so we have to take charge. We have to recognize. We have to trust and believe in God. So as we conclude, people of God, we conclude of living by faith in the now. Let us remember that each day, is an opportunity to grow, for growth. Each day is an opportunity for service. Each day is an opportunity to experience God's marvelous work within our church community, within our family, within our workplace, wherever the Lord will have us. You have been called out to do a great work. You You've been called out. You see, faith allows you, when you step out, faith allows you to be vulnerable and believe. To be vulnerable and believe. And what a testimony it is when the people of God take their rightful position, living by faith, pleasing God all the way, people of God. I I, I never forget... Uh, and I shared this story many times. We had a, we had a drummer, uh, Mark Filas is his name, and he made a public statement that God promised him a son. Brother, uh, Pastor Down, I don't know if you remember Mark Filas played the drums. Uh, everything you can think of went wrong for him to have a son. And he was here, he was married, had two, two twins, a wife, two twins, and things were going very well, but something happened. They divorced. Now Mark doesn't have a wife. Uh, I guess there's some other things he could have done to get <laughs> a son, but Mark chose to wait on the Lord. But he continued to uh, share with us, share with the church, God promised me a son. He was not turning loose. He was not turning loose. So the time came. Mark met this young lady. And before we knew it, there was a, a date set. They were scheduled to get married. They got married. Year or two passed. We get a note. Mark says, my wife is with child. Uh, He put that God promised me a son, so hit me in me. 
I can help but say, have y'all found out the sex? <laughs> he said, yes, pastor. It's going to be a boy. <laughs> Mark gets his son. What I love so much about Mark is that he didn't give up. He had every reason, he had every reason to, to give up and analyzing the, the whole divorce situation. It appeared to have not been his fault or whatever, but he continued to trust in God. And I say to you this morning, you've been called out, that, that God wants to put you on display. You, you've been called out. God wants to write you into the, the, the hall of faith. Uh, as so many others, by faith, Mark believed God and was given a son. What do you think it would look like as God writes you in his book of faith because you accepted your assignment in knowing that you've been called out. You've been called out to make a difference. And that was the message that the Lord wanted Habakkuk to, to get in his spirit to share with the people of God that the just shall live by faith. How about it today, people of God? Where is your faith? What's your, what's your faith level today? Are you like almost on empty? You can't say you don't have it. Because the scripture says God has given to everyone a measure of faith. But what's your faith level like now? Do you have enough confidence to believe that God can do the impossible in your life today? I want to challenge you on this last Sunday morning to take a step of faith. Don't wait to 2024. The time is still now, people of God. The time is still now. Not tomorrow, not tonight, now. Step out on faith. You've been called out to do a marvelous work for the Lord.